We are excited to welcome Komen Scholar Dr. Jennifer Ligabel as our presenter for the Sidewalks to Science webinar series today. So Dr. Ligabel is a senior physician at the Susan F. Smith Center for Women's Cancers at Dana-Farber Cancer Institute, and she's been a Komen Scholar since 2016. Um, Dr. Ligabel's Komen funded grant supports a weight loss intervention as a part of a multi-center trial. It's called the Breast Cancer Weight Loss, or BWELL, trial, and she'll speak about that today. She's looking at the impact of novel treatment approaches in women with residual breast cancer after neoadjuvant chemotherapy. So this focus on healthy lifestyle is a great fit for not only our race participants, but our three-day walkers, and we are delighted to have her speak on this important topic today. Um, as a reminder, uh, you can type in your questions in the chat box, but if you'll notice, you need to direct your questions to Krissa Smith, the host, um, in order for us to put them in the queue. So please feel free to enter those questions at any time, but direct them to the host. Thank you for joining us today. Dr. Legabel. A little bit more than 10 years ago, I started doing research looking at how diet and exercise affects cancer risk and also what happens after someone's been diagnosed with breast cancer. I really started working in this area because when you take care of women with breast cancer, pretty soon in your career, you start getting asked questions like, is there anything I can do to help myself? Or, you know, these treatments have, I know really helped me, but they've also taken a lot out of me. And so is there anything that I could do to help myself feel better or hopefully to have a lower risk of having the cancer come back? And when I first started working with patients with breast cancer, honestly, the answer to that question really was, well, we don't really know. We know that it's good to have your mammograms and to take tamoxifen, but I don't really know if there's anything that you can do yourself that would be beneficial. And we started thinking about that and realizing that women were feeling tired, they were having a lot of weight changes and changes in the way that they felt about themselves and feeling kind of many times a little depressed after therapy. And knowing that things like exercise can help with a lot of those types of problems, we started doing some studies at Dana-Farber looking at the value of exercise programs after breast cancer treatment and helping women to feel better. And we showed that for a woman who started an exercise program, she was likely to have more energy, have less fatigue, uh, have less of an impact of the treatment in terms of things like weight, um, oftentimes ha having less joint pain and other symptoms from therapy. And so we're really excited to be able to start to show some benefits of exercise after a breast cancer diagnosis. As we were doing this work, there was also some emerging science that suggested that exercise may not only be helpful um, in helping to overcome side effects and helping people to feel better, but there started to be some research suggesting that women who exercise regularly after having breast cancer seemed to do better from a cancer perspective. There were lower rates of re recurrence that were linked to exercise. Uh, there were also better survival. And really, looking back before breast cancer was diagnosed, started to see links between exercise and lower risk of developing breast cancer in the first place. Now these were large population studies, so they weren't actually trials that showed that if you took a woman and you put her on an exercise program, it directly affected the risk of developing breast cancer, but really started to show that some of these links existed. One of the things that our group moved into at that point was trying to figure out, well, why would that be? How could something like exercise affect something as complicated as breast cancer? So we were interested in looking at how an exercise program affected hormones that were linked to the risk of both developing breast cancer and the risk of cancer coming back after a woman had already undergone treatment for early breast cancer. And the hormone that we were really focused on was insulin. And insulin is something that many of you may be familiar with in terms of its relationship to diabetes, which is kind of a disease where your body stops responding to insulin. But we know that insulin is also a growth factor, so it makes things grow in your body, and it's related to how your body manages the food that it takes in, whether it gets stored as fat or it gets burned off as calories. Studies have shown that women who have higher levels of insulin have a higher risk of developing breast cancer, and women who have breast cancer who have higher insulin levels seem to have a higher risk of the cancer returning. So we are really interested to see whether you could use a non 
drug-based approach of lowering insulin levels. So we took women who had finished their breast cancer treatment and who were really not exercising, and we put them into one group that exercised and another group uh, that we didn't tell they couldn't exercise, but we didn't put them in an exercise program. And we showed that not only did women feel better, which we knew from before, but also the exercise program reduced the levels of insulin in the women who took part in the program. So providing kind of an early clue about how exercise might actually be able to affect breast cancer. So we moved on from this study uh, to a trial that we called the Preoperative Health and Body Study. And this was actually the first project uh, that I did that was funded by the Coleman Foundation. This was a study that we started in 2010 to really take our research looking at how exercise affected blood hormones to the next level. Because we know that sometimes what happens in your blood doesn't necessarily tell us what's happening in your breast cancer itself. So we were really interested in seeing whether there was any direct effect of exercise on breast cancer in people. There's there are studies that have shown that in rats and in mice, exercise can actually change breast cancer cells. But rats and mice are different from people in a lot of ways. So we wanted to see whether you could do an experiment where you looked at the effect of exercise directly on breast cancer in women. So the trial was conducted uh, with Yale University and Dana-Farber, and we set out to enroll women who had just been diagnosed with breast cancer who hadn't had their surgery yet. And what we did was then we took these women and we assigned them to two groups again. One of the groups took part in an exercise program and the other group was our control group. And that group, uh, we did not, um, I think that somehow my camera might have just gone off. So well, the slides are more interesting anyway. Um, so the group that was, did not take part in the exercise program, we gave them a relaxation CD. Uh, this is obviously a very stressful time when women are first diagnosed with breast cancer. So we wanted to make sure that everybody who took part in our program got some kind of benefit from being in it. So half the women took part in an exercise program, half the women took part in the mind-body relaxation program, and then we compared their cancer tissue um, from their initial biopsy. Let's see if that works. Okay, I think I can see myself again, so hopefully you all can too. Um, looking at their, the tumor breast cancer tissue at the beginning before they took part in the exercise program, and then again when they actually, when the women had their surgery. And we were interested to see if there were changes that happened in the group that took part in the exercise program. And we just presented these results in December. We found that, again, exercise lowered blood hormones linked to breast cancer. So that was what we had seen in our first study. We found that the mind-body program was really good at reducing stress and anxiety, which were unfortunately were pretty, pretty common in women at this point. But the thing that we were the most excited about was that we saw that the women who had been assigned to the exercise program had an activation of their immune system in the breast cancer tissue. And there's more and more research that shows that the immune system is a very important part of fighting cancer, and there's all kinds of new medicines that are being developed, immunotherapy. So we were able to show that exercise, even just over a short period of time, activated the immune set system within the breast cancer and the patients who took part in this study. So we are hoping to build on this work and learn a bit more about how exercise and other types of these lifestyle changes could activate the immune system and perhaps help the body fight off cancer as a part of treatment. While we were doing all of the work looking at exercise and ways to get women exercising and looking at these links between exercise and cancer, there also was a lot of other evidence uh, that was emerging that was suggesting that similar things were true about links between diet and breast cancer and weight and breast cancer. And there was this concept that it really wasn't one factor in general, but sort of the balance of how your body manages energy that might be important in helping to prevent and treat breast cancer. So energy balance basically looks at the food that you take in as calories, which hopefully doesn't look completely like the graphic on the left side there with the hamburgers and french fries, um, minus the calories that you burn exercising and what's left behind, which is weight. Um, and so each of these things has been linked to breast cancer in the last few years. And so as we looked at the work that we had done, 
linking exercise to breast cancer, showing that women could exercise, and the work that others had done, we wanted to bring that all together and think about how could we holistically affect this energy balance in ways that would improve nutrition, increase physical activity, and lower weight in women who had been diagnosed with breast cancer to see if making these changes could not only help women feel better, but could actually lower the risk of breast cancer recurrence and improve longevity after breast cancer. And so this is a study, uh, the Breast Cancer Weight Loss Trial, which is a study that the Susan G. Komen Foundation has been a great partner and supporter of uh, that we launched about seven months ago that will do exactly like that. The study was designed to look at the effect of a weight loss program on the risk of breast cancer recurrence in women who'd been diagnosed and treated for early breast cancer. This trial is a randomized trial, which means that half the women in the trial are going to take part in our weight loss program, and the other half will receive a health education program that teaches them about breast cancer, about survivorship. We actually use some of the great brochures uh, from the, the Coleman Foundation puts out to help patients in the time after breast cancer to think about how to transition to being a survivor. Um, the trial will ultimately enroll 3,136 women. It's being conducted all through the United States and Canada. And in fact, at this point, we have more than 900 centers that are taking part in the Be Well trial. And the study is really designed to show whether taking part in this weight loss program will reduce the risk of breast cancer coming back by at least 20%, which is on par with what we see with many of the treatments like chemotherapy and anti-estrogen treatments that we use right now in the treatment of women with breast cancer. So one of the things we get asked often is who can take part in this trial? First of all, women have to be diagnosed with breast cancer. So this isn't a trial looking at the ability of weight loss to prevent breast cancer, but it's really looking at whether weight loss can treat breast cancer. Women have to be either uh, overweight or obese, so they have to be at least about 15 pounds overweight to take part in this trial. So we're really helping to try to help women lose at least 10% of their body weight, so they need to have enough weight to lose uh, to be, still be in a healthy range. They have to have cancer that's either estrogen positive or triple negative. Uh, but it can't be HER2 new positive because there's not a strong connection between weight and cancer recurrence in women who are HER2 positive. The study is limited to patients with higher risk breast cancer, both because we know that those women often need more things to help them improve their outcomes. Because women with stage one cancers do so well that you would need about 15,000 women to show any benefit. And unfortunately, um, a trial of that size that's looking at an intensive intervention would be really hard to do. Patients can't have metastatic breast cancer or certain types of diabetes, and we're enrolling women who finished all of their chemotherapy and radiation and surgery. So the weight loss program, our goal, as I said before, is to help people lose about 10% of their body weight. And so for most people, uh, that will be somewhere between 20 and 25 pounds. Uh, and this is achieved through diet and exercise. So this isn't a study that has surgery or pills, but really focuses on nutrition and physical activity. Each patient is paired with one of our health coaches. And right now, this was a, a, a slide that we took around New Year's. Uh, we sent uh, greeting cards to all of our participants. Uh, we right now have 12 coaches. Uh, the study has really been enrolling patients really quickly, uh, which has been great to see how much enthusiasm there has been. Um, so each patient is paired with a coach, and they work with that coach over two years. Uh, there are 42 phone calls that are delivered during that period that really help people uh, think about how much they're eating and what the nutritional quality is and how much exercise they're doing. And then patients also keep track of how much they're eating and what they're eating and how much they're exercising. This is our diet plan, just in brief. Uh, this really the focus is on cutting calories. So this isn't a low fat diet or a low carbohydrate diet or a Mediterranean diet. It really has some flexibility for the patient, uh, taking into account their own personal preferences, but focuses on the fact that the more calories you eat, the more you weigh. And there's really not a way to trick your body in thinking calories or not calories, as much as I wish that there was. Um, the goal is to decrease calories by between 500 and 1,000 calories a day, and that usually leads to a one to two pound weight, uh, weight loss for each week. And we focus a lot on portion control. 
a lot of my patients will tell me what they're eating and all the things are very healthy, but if there are too many of them, then you're still not gonna lose weight, even if you're eating organic and only raw foods and things like that, volume is really important. Exercise is the other critical part of our intervention. Um, as many of you may know from weight loss efforts, exercise alone won't help you lose weight, but for those of you who are going to be walking 60 miles over the next few weeks, exercise is excellent to increase your metabolism um, and to help you keep weight off because what happens is when your body loses weight, it sometimes goes into a little bit of a calorie conservation mode. And unless you exercise to keep your metabolism up, it's hard to keep weight off. So we really help our patients try to get up to at least 150 minutes of exercise every week um, by the six months of the study. So this study, we have been very excited. As I said, we opened this about seven months ago. We have a number of wonderful partners for this. Uh, Susan G. Coleman, which we've talked about, the National Cancer Institute. And the other thing that we've been really excited about in this trial is we've gotten a lot of sponsorship uh, from different organizations like Fitbit and Nestle Health Science and American Cancer Society that are really excited about trying to find new ways to help patients be healthy after a cancer diagnosis. And this has been something that has been great to be able to develop a program that's flexible because one size does not fit all when it comes to weight loss. So being able to develop a program that works for somebody who's living in a big city and maybe more web savvy or somebody who's living in a remote area and really pen and paper is the right mode for them. Uh, so we've been so excited to get this project up and off the ground. We've enrolled more than 400 patients in our first seven months, like I said, uh, with 900 sites participating. So this is really an effort uh, that takes a village and we're so excited to partner with Komen on this project. So that's all that I have. I am happy to answer questions that people may have to talk about this study or about diet and exercise more generally in terms of breast cancer. Hi, Dr. Ligabel. This is Krista Smith again. Um, the first question that I see here in the chat box is, are there specific types of exercises that you are promoting during this program? So our study, because our coaches never meet patients face-to-face, -face, primarily focuses on aerobic exercise, things like walking or cycling or working on the elliptical. I think Strength training or that type of intervention, or that type of exercise is important, but it's a little bit harder to do when you never work in person with a patient. So our study really focuses more on getting your heart rate up, getting into a target zone um, of kind of fat burning um, and an aerobic zone. So we really emphasize primarily aerobic exercise. And many of our patients, honestly, are walking at a, at a moderate rate, which has been what has been most linked to good health in breast cancer patients. Thank you. Um, the next question I have is, what advice can you give patients who are feeling too sick to exercise? So a lot of people feel very tired, especially right after finishing treatment, or they may have side effects like numbness and tingling in their hands and feet. What we recommend is that people start slowly. Doing something is better than nothing at all. So I usually tell my patients, try to walk for five minutes. Try to do that a couple of times a week. The next week, try to walk for an extra day or walk for 10 minutes instead of five. Set really manageable, small goals. It's about building over time and not about finishing your treatment and trying to go out for a five mile walk. So starting slow is really important, but there have been many, many studies that have shown that the most effective treatment uh, for fatigue or the tiredness that people feel after and during cancer therapy is exercise. So though it may seem so counterintuitive, trying to do even just a little bit is probably the best thing that you can do for yourself. Um, so the next question I have is, and you talked a little bit about this um, at the beginning of the presentation, um, they are interested in knowing more about other trials that look at weight loss preventing breast cancer. So unfortunately, there aren't any trials like that. Um, there was a large study called the Women's Health Initiative that looked at whether cutting the fat in your diet, specifically not weight loss or exercise or anything else, but just lowering fat 
reduce the risk of developing breast cancer. And there was a little bit of a reduction, but not very much. There was about a 9% lower risk of developing breast cancer, but it wasn't it wasn't very, it wasn't significant. The, the trial really was designed to look for a much larger reduction. So, you know, the only real evidence that losing weight could reduce the risk of breast cancer is starting to come out of studies looking at patients who have bariatric surgery. Now, bariatric surgery really is only recommended for patients that, you know, have a, a significant amount of weight to lose. So that's not the necessarily um, every, every person. But these studies have shown that women who go through bariatric surgery seem to have a lower risk of developing cancer in general. There's not as much evidence specifically for different types of cancer yet, but that's starting to grow. And it suggests that compared to similarly matched eight for age and weight and other things, women who go through bariatric surgery have about a 50% lower risk of developing any type of cancer compared to women who don't. Um, and so hopefully over the next few years, we'll have a little bit more information specifically about breast cancer from those trials. Okay, the next question is, um, is there a plan for following up with the study to see if the ability to keep the weight off um, changes long-term outcomes? Yes, so the, the study, the primary, outcome of the study is to look at whether women who take part in this study have a low, who take part in the weight loss program have a lower risk of having cancer come back um, and will follow women for 10 years. So we'll, we'll follow both their weight and we'll follow what happens in terms of their breast cancer. And there are a number of analyses done looking at how much weight is lost and how long it's, uh, how long the weight is, is lost for um, and how that relates to the risk of having a breast cancer recurrence. Okay, thank you. Um, the next question, let's see if I can phrase it. Um, being overweight or losing weight is going to impact so many things, um, including heart health, diabetes, et cetera. Is that all playing a part in this, in the breast cancer uh, diagnosis, are those things impacting in a risk factor for, for breast cancer? So I think that you know, this raises a good point in that there are several common risk factors for heart disease, for diabetes, and for breast cancer. Um, and so in our trial, we're not only looking at whether women who lose weight have a lower risk of their breast cancer coming back, we're also looking at whether women who lose weight have a lower risk of developing diabetes or heart disease if they don't already have those things at the beginning of the study. I think that, you know, that is, there have been some studies that have suggested a link between diabetes and the risk of developing breast cancer, but not so much for heart disease. Um, but I think that those are things that we hope to try to untangle a little bit in this trial that we're doing as well. There's just a lot that we still don't know. Okay, thank you. Um, I'm not seeing, I think we've gotten through most of the questions in the chat box. Are there, are there any other questions? I'll, I'll ask a question. Um, okay. What do you feel like you've learned the most in, in trying to uh, plan this trial because changing behavior is, is really challenging. So what do you think you've learned the most in terms of um, helping people make that change? Because it's a big change. It is a big change. I think that you know, one of the things that we've really learned as we started to work with patients on this study, you know, again, is kind of going back to that one size does not fit all. Um, but what we see pretty consistently is that you need support in order to make these types of changes. So that relationship with the health coach and the patient is so important. Um, and I think that's one of the reasons why I think that this study is really important in that you know, we, we may know, we all know that we should exercise more, that we should eat a little bit better, that keeping weight in a good range is important. But knowing that you should do those things and doing them are two different things. And I think that that's especially true after you've gone through breast cancer treatment and you're tired and you have all these additional barriers to exercise and you know may have gone through menopause as a result of chemotherapy making it harder to take weight off so one of the things we really want to achieve with this trial is if we can show that this leads to improvements in how women do from a breast cancer perspective 
we can develop programs that then are available to patients. Because right now, I can tell my patients, I think you should exercise, but there's not a place for them to go and do that. There's not any kind of a prescription I can write where they can go and take that somewhere and have that covered for them. So I think that one of the things that's so important with this work is to be able to establish these programs and to help them be accessible to patients, to help them make these changes, because it's really hard to do on your own. Thank you, I would agree. It's a, it can be a real challenge, especially with all of these additional barriers. Um, I think we've answered all of the questions and I haven't seen any more come in. So I just wanted to thank you once again for speaking with us today, Dr. Ligabel. It was a fascinating topic and, and a really important one. To your point, um, this really can have an impact on on all breast cancer patients. So thank you once again for joining us for Sidewalks to Science, and thank you everyone else for joining us to hear Dr. Legobel. Great, thank you. Have a good afternoon, everyone.